This film is for anyone who is thinking of doing the Chicago Marathon. It's a race that I did a couple of weeks ago, and as well as my own tips and advice, we've also asked our Facebook community for what they think, and I'm going to take their comments, reflect on them, throw in my own ideas. So if you watched this channel before, you might know that I've always said New York Marathon is my favorite race. It's such a fantastic atmosphere, such an amazing city. The one thing that really sucks about New York is the course. It's bloody hard. And what I found with Chicago was you had the same atmosphere, maybe not quite the same town as New York, but not far off, but with an absolutely fantastic course. It was so flat at such a fast world record uh, bidding course. So I absolutely loved it. So let's see what people in our Facebook community have said about their experience of the Chicago Marathon. Janice says, spend the extra money to stay near the start line. I think one of the, the brilliant things about Chicago Marathon is it starts and finishes just dead center in the, the heart of the town. It is far more convenient than any other uh, major that I've done. Uh, just being able to walk for me 10 minutes from my hotel around the corner to the start of the marathon. And even more important, with it starting and finishing at the same place, 10 minutes, well, it wasn't quite 10 minutes because I was kind of stumbling, uh, 10 minutes back to my hotel afterwards so I could get a shower, get something to eat, recover and make it to, to meet my friends in the pub. Uh, so I thought that uh, the the marathon course starting finishing the center town was perfect. As I say, I stayed about 10 minutes away from the start uh, and made it really easy for me. And I can see why Janice would say, stay as close as you can to the start. It is dead easy. Uh, it's not always possible. I, I mean, the hotels sell out pretty fast. Uh, it is more expensive staying near the start. I had friends who were staying a few uh, subway or L or whatever they call it in Chicago stops away. They said that the public transport was brilliant, really easy, really convenient to get to the start. The one thing that they complained about was that they had to walk up the stairs to get to the platform to, to get the train back. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was good being near the start, but I don't think it's essential. So next we have Jill. She says, when they say you need to get to your corral two hours ahead of time, they are correct. Um, I, I don't know. I saw other people comment that you don't need to do that. I think it's really a personal preference. Like when you go to the, the airport, do you like to be the person who's there nice and comfortably a couple of hours ahead? Or are you happy to uh, risk committing your flight and, and getting there late? I'd say that it probably took me about 20 minutes to get into the park where the start is. Uh, I went from there to a toilet uh, where there was a queue of like four people, uh, then hung around for a bit, went back to the toilet about 30 minutes later, and there was a queue that probably took 20 minutes to get through. I felt like I was in my corral with plenty of time um and could choose whether i want to go further forward or further back so i think it's really a personal preference one thing i chose not to do was check a bag i have heard from other people that that took about 20 minutes as well to check your bag in uh, i did hear of it taking longer to get your bag back at the end where i was quite fortunate again because i was staying near the start that uh, I could just stumble down the street back to my hotel. I didn't really need to worry about having warm clothes. I didn't really need to worry about having food or drink. Now I was quite happy with kind of the, the goodie bag that uh, they gave you at the, the end of the marathon and the bottle of water, which I got there. Uh, so I was okay with that. So yeah, personal preference. Next up, Phil says, uh, the buildings will screw with your GPS. So go into your settings and set it to manual lapping. Uh, so this is something which I definitely heard from people. It's something that I did. So you know, I couldn't really tell you whether automatic lapping would have worked. Uh, I hear with some newer watches, it, it's fine. But uh, I quite enjoyed clicking off the miles. Uh, which isn't something I've really done too much before. And uh, doing that manually, I found it uh, 
kind of reassuring in a way that I would click it off and then look at my watch and be in that mile. I wasn't thinking I've got 10 miles left to go. I'd be thinking I've got four minutes left until I reach my next uh, mile stop. Uh, so I I definitely did that. Uh, and I think I managed to just miss two mile markers. I don't know if they were there or not, uh, but I could kind of work out when it was like at 10 minutes and I'd still not hit a mile marker that I must have missed it and I needed to wait for the next one. Uh, yeah, but as I say, some newer Garmin watches supposedly or Apple watches uh, were fine. Uh, so interested to hear what other people's experience was of that. <laughs> the next one we've got is Erin and Erin says, there are bees on the course, which isn't something that I experienced. Um, yeah, bees on the course. Surely they would make you run faster, Erin. Uh, is, are the bees necessarily a bad thing? Okay, so Erin says, do the 5K shakeout run the day before. So I did the shakeout run. Um, I think for a lot of people, if they haven't done a big city marathon before, the shakeout run is a good idea. You start... Uh, at the same place as the start of the marathon. So you, you can familiarize yourself with that. Uh, and it was good fun. I mean, loads of people did it. It was really well run. Um, you got a great hat out of it, which I should have brought with me uh, to film this today. Um, but I will say that there were lots of other shakeout runs. Uh, I could have done a shakeout run with Kafuzi, uh, but missed out on that. Uh, and some of my friends went to do that. But I preferred to do the uh, the official race. Um, one thing I did on that actually was I paid for the photos on the 5K thinking that I wouldn't look as shit in the 5K photos as I would in the marathon. So I could use those if I want. Uh, but uh, yeah, 5K, definitely lots of options. The official 5K was good. Uh, I'd recommend it, yeah. Next one, Anonymous. Uh, do not wear any new gear on race day. It is a bad idea. So I, I don't know what experience they've got. I think that's generally a good bit of advice for any marathon. I did hit the expo hard. I got some new T-shirts, uh, some new kind of like... Uh, layers for for winter uh and i didn't wear any of it because yeah bad idea uh you see so many people who've had their new lovely chicago marathon t-shirt ruined by bloody nipples because it's rubbed them um so i i definitely agree with anonymous there i hope that your race wasn't too bad uh always wear gear that you practice in beforehand Next bit of advice comes from Jill, and she says, go to the expo on the first day. Um, I guess it depends whether you're in town, doesn't it, and whether that's possible. I was there. I did do that. And then I think I was actually the second person into the expo. It's about the closest I got to winning a race all weekend. Um, but uh, it, it was great. Just so much stuff there. I'd compare it to the New York Expo, actually, or the London one. Big major expos. Loads of stuff to try and separate you from your dollars. Uh, and it did a good job with me. I thought it was amazing. Um, lots of stuff to do there. I've seen films uh, of the Saturday and uh, it did look a lot busier, but I still think that people were able to go through and get their numbers quite quickly. It was just once you got into the expo, uh, if you wanted to to look at the, the shops, uh, they were all pretty busy. Um, so yeah, down to, to personal preference really and whether you're able to do that. Okay, and another uh, bit of advice from Jill, put your name on your t-shirt uh, and then people will shout out your name. I mean, the Chicago Marathon, one of the reasons that I really rated it alongside New York is the crowds. The crowds were absolutely fantastic. There were so many people out in the streets, almost all of the way around. The small bit where there weren't so many people, I didn't really note so much. There was, there was still a, like a sparser uh, number of people, but it was just so well supported. And the crowds were brilliant. They had signs, they were cheering, there were dancers, there were karaoke singers. Just the atmosphere was amazing. I really would put it up there with New York, with London for, for atmosphere, uh, just with a, a much flatter, easier course. Uh, so uh, 
yeah, put your name on your T-shirt and then people will, will cheer for you. Okay, next bit of advice for after the race. Laura says, stay on the Sunday night. Do not get yourself in a situation where you're having to check out your hotel at five o'clock in the morning before you go for your race. Uh, don't be stumbling around the airport with sore legs uh, trying to get a flight. Stay on the Sunday, if at all possible. Uh, sounds like a good bit of advice. Again, if you're uh, able to do that through uh, the, the cost of it and through your work. Uh, I did stay for a couple of days after the marathon and uh, really enjoyed the city. Chicago is such a fantastic place. It just has the most amazing pizza as well. Not the, the thick dish, but the, the nice, thin, crispy uh just incredible food in Chicago, full stop. So I could uh, recover well <laughs> after the marathon. So uh, yeah, stay in Chicago as much as you can. Great city. Okay, next one. Kate says, take lots of pictures. I was overwhelmed by that experience and didn't take pictures. Uh, yeah, I I guess it, it depends on your plan, really, doesn't it? Uh, I, pitch, I got uh, the marathon photos paid for a, a bundle of photos from them, got really good pictures. I didn't take a phone myself. I decided at the last minute I wasn't going to take headphones. I wasn't going to take my phone. Just it was one less thing to carry. Um, and so I couldn't take photos. But uh, I, I guess the problem with that bit of advice for me is having been there and tried to record films. You know, there's lots of people on uh, YouTube who are showing full films of their race, uh, which, you know, go and watch if that's what you're into. Uh, I've tried to do it and I record like the first 10 miles and then I'm just kind of like in the zone with running and cannot do it. And I'm the, I'm the same with photos. I've taken my phone on the New York Marathon thinking this is a once in a lifetime thing and just didn't take pictures after 10 miles. I was too much into the race. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, good idea if uh, if it's your one-off race and uh, yeah, if that's your thing, I guess. Uh, so next one, we have a comment from Victoria. She says about the bees, again, saying that the gels attract bees and you have gels on your hands and your mouth and the bees attack you. Again, I didn't see this, uh, but, and it's not something I've heard from many people. Uh, so I, I'd be interested to see if lots of people have had problems with bees in Chicago in the comments. Uh, I don't think it's a big problem. Sorry to hear that uh, that happened to you, Victoria. I really hope that uh, you managed to get away from the bees and managed to have a really fast mile because you were running away from them. Um, yeah, bees, who knew? Next one, uh, Jenna says, do not eat a bag of Skittles at mile 17, however good you feel. That, yeah, it seems like pretty good advice. I have to say, uh, looking at my own experience of Chicago, it's the best that I've ever done with fueling. I had the gels uh, every three miles with a glass of water at a water station. The gels went down perfectly. I hadn't hit the wall at all, which is incredible. You know, I've that was my 12th marathon, and it's the best I've felt at the end of the marathon. I was that guy who I always hate, who was going along in the last mile, high-fiving people and going like, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm normally the guy who's suffering through the last mile, counting the seconds in my head. Uh, but for some reason, I managed to get the feeling right. Perhaps this is it, and now I'll always be okay. Or perhaps this was a one-off, probably more likely the, the latter. But uh, Skittles, not part of my fueling plan. Um, yeah, probably best avoid that. I hope, Jenna, that uh, it didn't spoil your race. Uh, next up, we have Jessica, and she says, get the hospitality tent tickets. They're brilliant. Um, I kind of comment on that, really. I, I think I saw a few comments from people saying how they have showers, uh, in the hospitality tent, they have lots of food for you. Uh, there were kind of famous YouTubers in there, like Kafuzi. Uh, but I, I didn't get a ticket, I guess, because my hotel was only 10 minutes away from the start. It wasn't so urgent for me to, it wasn't something I really thought about. I was able to hobble around the corner and have a shower, have some food. Uh, but perhaps it is something I will do next year just to, to give it a go and see. 
Speaking of next year, I had actually entered already the Chicago Marathon for 2024, entered the ballot for it. My time wasn't quite fast enough to uh, get an automatic entry for age. Uh, so I will have to keep my fingers crossed for the ballot. But again, you know, it shows how much I love this race. I did plan to go back to New York in 2024, but no, now I'm all in for Chicago. Such a brilliant race. Uh, next, a uh, bit of advice comes from Sydney. Practice your fueling. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, you know, as I say, my 12th go to marathon, I managed to get my fueling right. Uh, the gels that I took going around are the gels, the uh, Morton gels that I've been taking in training. Um so I was used to them, didn't have any problems at all. I know a lot of people don't like gels and will look for different ways around it. Just you have to learn to, to live with gels. It made my life so much easier when I switched from trying to work out something like jelly babies that I could eat and switch to doing marathon fueling like the pros do. It just makes so much sense. You know, uh, what with the pro marathoners do, they're not going to be eating a Kendall mint cake. Just uh, have a look at the Morton gels. They are easy on your stomach and uh, I found them to be excellent, really transform the way that I'm fueling on races. Uh, so yeah, I cannot agree more. Uh, practice, practice, practice with your uh, race uh, food and fueling. Our next uh, tip is from Lisa Marie. Uh, she says, book your hotel as soon as possible. I think especially if you want to stay near the start, uh, you probably have to do that. Uh, as of today, 19th of October, hotels are not yet out for next year. So there's pretty sparse pickings, but I'm told that within the next couple of weeks, hotels will become available. And even though I won't find out until December whether I've been successful in the draw, I will book a hotel uh, on booking.com, like refundable, don't pay any money till you turn up next year. Uh, and it makes total sense to me. Get that hotel and I'll be booking same hotel as I did this year, Virgin Hotel, just around the corner from uh, the, the start line. The, the next tip comes from Robin, who says, take the blue line from O'Hare Airport. It is only $5. So compared to an Uber or a taxi, the, the blue line is going to be massively cheaper. That's how I got into town. Uh, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. The public transport generally in Chicago was really good. Uh, just heard lots of positive comments about it. Chicago has a bit of a, a bad reputation. So, you know, I think a lot of people were dubious about taking that public transport. But in my experience and from what I've heard of other runners, uh, absolutely brilliant. And the blue line from the airport yeah, definitely saves good money uh, that can be spent in the expo. <laughs> Next tip comes from Sharon. She says, you don't need any music. There's music, at DJs shouting all around the course. Completely agree. As I said, the atmosphere in Chicago is absolutely brilliant. Um, I was going to wear headphones, change my mind at the last minute. Glad I did. Just, it's amazing. You really want to plug into that, plug into the, the city rather than your own music. Again, it's partly down to personal preference, but for me, I uh, definitely will leave my headphones at home again next year. I thought that the crowds were brilliant. So the next one comes from Elizabeth, and Elizabeth says, wear a bathrobe as your kind of warm clothes for the start of the marathon. So if you've not done uh, a marathon like this before, uh, you have to get to the start a couple of hours, they recommend beforehand. Uh, we were pretty lucky with weather, but it was uh, still pretty chilly, so I had a, a hoodie. But uh, Elizabeth saying a bathrobe, I think that would look uh, <laughs> not that crazy, but I might try it. I do like the, the sound of it, and you can have all your gels and stuff in the pockets. Maybe too easy to leave them behind, leave your phone in the side. Uh, yeah, so your, your kind of clothes that you're wearing, like uh, to, to keep warm, uh, at the start of the race, you then dispose of within your corral and they donate to charity. Uh, so having throwaway clothes is a really good idea. And I guess a bathrobe is one option. <laughs> the next tip comes from Laura and she says, do not do lots of sightseeing the day before or it will wreck your legs. And uh, yes, I can completely see that. I didn't do that. I stayed in my hotel room the day before uh, and watched Netflix. and. It was dull as dishwater, you know, you're just wanting to to get to 
to marathon day. I did the 5K in the morning, then went back to my hotel. So by the time I'd done the 5K and then walked back to my hotel, I was up to like nearly 20,000 steps. And I really didn't want to push much more than that. So I really tried to to stay around the hotel and close to the hotel. Uh, I uh, went to a, a place called Italy where I got some pasta, like a bowl of pasta that I could have that evening in my hotel room. I also got one to have at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, the next morning, which would turn out to be really good, part of my uh, fueling for the, the race. Uh, so yeah, I I can imagine that it depends again what when you arrive in the city perhaps you have to go to the expo uh it is tempting to to go and run around the city but uh do try and keep off your legs in chicago actually the, there's the architecture tours on the river which were a boat tour uh, it takes about an hour and a half uh that was really good i actually i did it a few days before the marathon but that would have been a really good thing to do uh on the day before the marathon and i'm pretty sure that the the boats would all be full with runners uh yeah i mean it's fantastic the the whole city feels like it's full of runners that weekend so you've got everyone in uh their uh boston tops if you have one i i unfortunately don't uh yet uh but their their marathon t-shirts uh lots of people running around it's just absolutely brilliant so that's the the bits of advice that i've got off people um you know i just think chicago was a brilliant race um i had heard that it it was fast and flat it's an awesome course uh the city might not quite be new york but on every other level the the course the crowds the expo uh, the gear that i could buy at the expo um just immense i cannot wait to to go back to chicago next year it is definitely my go-to marathon is it the marathon i'm going to go to and try and get a fast time i'm gonna dig in train hard and uh, go there with a, a time in mind i guess if i wasn't bothered about the time then i might go to new york uh might go and try and do a, a different race that i've never done before but with time in mind Chicago really seems like the place to be heading. Uh, so if you're going to enter Chicago for next year or if you're you're in it already, uh, you're going to have a brilliant time. Just absolutely immense. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Uh, I do monitor and reply to all the comments on here. Uh, so I will try and help you with uh, any questions you've got. Do join the Chicago Marathon Facebook groups. Just look for the largest ones. Uh, runners are so helpful. Uh, join those communities and that will really help you and really give you a buzz in the run up to Marathon Day. For me, uh, you know, the people I work with, my family weren't really that bothered about me doing yet another marathon. Um, so I could kind of go into that Facebook group and be with all these people who were dead excited about it. Uh, so it was really, really good. Um, so enjoy your race. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do. And I'll be back with other race reports and tips and advice very soon.